itself in, in the countries where it operates. Hmm. Gary, do you want to do the same for your outfit? Yeah, make sure I don't abstain here, but actually press the speak <laughs> button. Uh, my name is Gary Swart. I'm the CEO of a company uh, called Odesk. And Odesk is the world's largest online work platform. Uh, what we do is we enab enable companies to hire, manage, and pay a flexible online workforce. So the problem we're all aware, with is, uh, aware of is that the jobs typically don't exist where the talent lives. And historically, we've tried to solve this problem by bringing the worker to the work, right? So here in the US, we're focused, uh, we're based in Silicon Valley, and it's incredibly hard right now, despite the fact that the economy is not doing great and unemployment's at almost an all-time high, the talent war is full on in the Bay Area. And even if you can find the talent, you can't afford the talent because they're all going to Google and Zynga and Facebook for free lunches and yoga classes and iguanas and everything else that they, they offer. But the problem <laughs> is there's this world of talent out there and we're, we're focused on more H-1B visas or how do we bring the worker to the work. And what Odesk is doing is we're leveraging the internet to bring the work to the worker. So we have over 300,000 businesses on Odesk that are coming to us to find the right talent from around the world. They're posting their job requirements, they're searching our database looking for that perfect worker. They're, um, this is talent they can't find in their local geography. They're accessing over 1.6 million contractors that we have in our network. These are contractors from all over the world. Uh, in descending order by hours worked last month, it's uh, Philippines, India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, US is fifth. Um, Ukraine, Russia, Poland, and then 140 countries from there. So what we've done is we've leveraged technology and the internet to enable every worker to create their own profile and to be searchable, take tests, prove they have the skills they say they have, determine their own hourly rate. And rather than physically going to work on premise, they're working via the internet through our patent pending technology to enable companies to manage that worker by walking around via the internet. Through this technology, we can guarantee that an hour billed is an hour worked, and an hour worked is an hour paid. We guarantee work to the client, we guarantee payment to the contractor, regardless of where they are in the world, and we facilitate the movement of money and all statutory as the back end of the service. So it's very similar to e-commerce, find the right good, get delivery of the good, and pay for the good. This is e-work. It's find the right worker, get delivery of the work, and pay for the work via the internet. Now to put it in perspective, E-commerce after 20 years of e-commerce is about 7% of all commerce. Right now, e-work will be a billion dollars this year. Uh, most of that will be through Odesk, and we don't even believe we're scratching the surface of what's possible. We believe that e-work should at least be as big as e-commerce. And if you envision out uh, 15 years, and you say, okay, what does that look like? Well, imagine it's 7% of all work. Or what if it's smaller? What if it's only 2% of all work? Two out of every 100 people work via the internet rather than on-premise, that is a massive, massive market. And do you, are you the employer or are you just the matchmaker? Uh, so uh, the question is, are we the employer or just the matchmaker? We're the platform to enable you, the client, to match with the right person, to contract with the right person, to manage that person as if they were in the same office, and to pay the person. So it's not just the match. We're not charging the contractor to belong to the network. We're not charging the client to post a job. That's free. Uh, with that, we had 170,000 jobs posted last month, again, despite the economy. And, um, and so we make money on the match, on, the, on the, the match, the manage, and the pay. We only make money if payment goes through our system. I see. And say, take the Philippines. What kind of jobs are we talking about? So if you think of our business on three dimensions, size of client, that's not your question. Type of work is your question. And then the third axis is location of client and contractor. Let's talk about type of work. While we started with mostly technical work six years ago, over six years ago, that's where the innovators and the early adopters were. Massive supply and demand. Um, can be done in any language, has to be done in front of the computer. So, uh, so we started with technical work, but we're getting aggressively pulled now into all work types. The Philippines, by way of example, is mostly um, marketing, uh, uh, administrative, uh, data entry, data mining, uh, more administrative and marketing type jobs. But they, all, they almost all have something to do with the 
computer? Uh, all the work on ODesk has to be done in front of the computer. That's the way we guarantee work. We guarantee that an hour bill does an hour work through our unique technology. It's also the way we can guarantee payment. In the absence of some record that work actually happened, no, no payment uh, changes hands. Okay. So Jonathan, you're, you're in a different line of work, but you're there at the frontier trying to figure out, if I understand it right, where all this is going or where we've been. Yes. <laughs> Tell us something my team, interesting. My, my team is working on that. Um, so I think the best way to do this is because you, you probably, mo most folks have heard of Microsoft. Some folks may have heard of Microsoft Research. Uh, probably very few of you have heard of the group I work for within Microsoft Research. So uh, Microsoft Research uh, is um, a, a big organization by many standards, but relatively small by Microsoft standards. But I've got hundreds of colleagues who are PhDs, uh, many of whom are, most of them are computer science. Uh, folks working on uh, the problems of computing and social computing that are five and ten years out. They're not directly related to anything that's immediately in a Microsoft product, but Microsoft um, invests in Microsoft Research because sometimes um, things that we discover find their way to Microsoft products. Like uh, we're, we're, we're all very excited about Connect right now, and a lot of the early software for that, a lot of the early innovations came out of the work that Microsoft Research does. But as Microsoft researchers, we um, work in our professional fields, in our scientific fields, as opposed to looking all internally. So um, we organize by groups. My group is based in Bangalore, and it's called Technology for Emerging Markets. And we are uh, interdisciplinary. There are just eight or nine of us, depending on how many interns are around. Um, we're a combination of computer scientists and social anthropologists, economists, policy people. My background is in communication research. Uh, and our hard question, um, at, which, which makes it an MSR type question, is how to make technology most useful and relevant for uh, the billions of people for whom these technologies haven't traditionally been first designed. So we work in all the traditional uh, development verticals. You know, we do livelihoods and agriculture and education and governance and these sorts of things. And as a group, we just work on projects um, that that have a, a kind of deep research challenge to them. Um, my background in communication research means I, I happen to be interested in the way small enterprises and micro, micro entrepreneurs uh, and the, the self-employed have uh, taken to the first telephones of their lives, uh, which has happened, you know, this revolution of the phone um, in the mobile phone in the last 10 years or so. Um, and, you know, what does that do to their social networks, their entrepreneurial networks, what does it really mean for productivity, those sorts of things. And I attack it as a research question. My colleagues, um, we talk and they build sometimes and they learn by building. So some folks in my lab, and I'll wrap this up, um, in, in my group in Bangalore have um, done things that aren't yet full enterprises like you guys have, but are in the same sort of domain. We've tried uh, micro, uh, micro work scenarios that are somewhere different than SMS or uh, MTurk. Amazon's Mechanical Turk is uh, well known here. Um, Why did you not assume that? It's um, a platform that, that instead of providing full jobs, takes a task and maybe if you need a page translated from French to you know, um, Hindi, you could cut that thing up into uh, 25 sentences and send each sentence out to somebody. Or if you needed to um, find the, the lamp in an image, um, uh, maybe you're trying to code for a catalog or something, you could send out all the images you have and some person can tell you where the lamp is and he gets paid or she gets paid five or ten cents for that, for that act. And there's a business there and there's a platform that, that lets uh, people match uh, needs and skills. Um, we've been trying to do that sort of similar things for um, people who have uh, only access to very simple phones, not even smartphones right now. That's why it's still a research question. Um, and we've also had people um, work on the kind of the, the, the ecosystem part of this, spinning off the, how the technology matches with local labor needs um, to spin off and make a, a group called Baba Job, which is another one of these uh, uh, labor technologies, um, came out of our lab originally. 